the spirituality of St. John Paul II from the beginning of his life. Part 1. After completing undergraduate studies at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point in 1974, Father Kalinski did postgraduate study at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland, where he received an ma in Slavic ethnography. Many years later, perceiving a call to the religious life and the priesthood, Friar Kalinski became one of the founding members of the Canons Regular of St. John Cantius, a new religious community of men that was founded at St. John Cantius Parish in Chicago in 1998. He received his MDIV degree following the completion of his seminary studies at Holy Apostles Seminary in Cromwell, Connecticut, and was ordained to the priesthood in 2004. After serving as an associate pastor at St. John Cantius Parish in Chicago, Father Kalinsky was appointed in 2007 as pastor of his community's second parish, St. Peter's in Volo, Illinois. Since 2010, he has been assigned to Holy Apostles Seminary and College as formator and academic advisor for the seminarians of the Canons Regular of St. John Cantius. He is also a member of the seminary faculty and helps in seminary formation note from Dr. Chervin. The word spirituality means different things to different people. In the Catholic tradition we associate the word primarily with the witness and writings of great saints or other influential accounts of ardent Christians in their lives and words. Others may think of spirituality primarily as a personal quest for holiness. Although St. John Paul II was considered holy even by those outside the Catholic faith, not often has his life and thought been studied as a type of spirituality. At Holy Apostles, Father Denis Kalinsky is admired mostly for his courses on liturgy, but he is also a fine confessor and spiritual director. I think you will find his article interesting and helpful. When we think of the great Catholic minds of the 20th century, we can't help but think of St. John Paul II already called by some the the great. His pontificate was not only one of the longest in the history of the Church but also one of the most fruitful. A natural teacher, who was called to guide Christ's Church at a critical time in her history, he left us with an enormous body of works, official papal documents, papal audiences and public addresses, teachings, academic works, personal writings and literary works. We have only just begun to assess their extent and the impact that they will have for generations to come. At his death, the people who had gathered in St. Peter's Square, already sensing the odor of sanctity, spontaneously began to call out Santo Subito. For, not only was he a great intellect, perhaps one of the greatest of modern times, he was a charismatic figure, who knew how to connect with the crowds, especially youth. He was a person, who exuded holiness and whose life was so thoroughly immersed in Christ that people knew he lived in a unique, intimate relationship with him. St. John Paul's teachings brought us many new insights into the faith. But these new perspectives were not only the result of theological reflection. They also often had roots in his own spirituality and the experiences of his life. Now that he will officially be counted among the ranks of the blessed in heaven, it will therefore be important to look more closely at his spiritual life to see what made him a saint and what gave him some of those great insights into our faith. And one cannot adequately speak about the inner spiritual life of this man without considering the complexity of his life and the large role that his native land played in shaping the life of his soul.